This is the first time a bandicoot has stepped on Air Peninsula since foxes and cats caused their extinction. They're settling in. And now there's some joeys in pouches. They normally breed in winter and so we're checking them out and yeah, the other night we found a couple with, with little joeys in them which is really exciting. So we've got a new, new generation of uh, Secret Rocks bandicoots. This is their new home. Secret Rocks is a private reserve. It's the life's work of Catherine Mosby and John Reid. You get sort of quite worried about them, particularly um, when you've only got a fence keeping the cats and foxes out. So it's, a, it's only a small barrier and if they do get in, they could wipe the population out really quickly. So I think we, we're obviously doing a lot of checks to make sure that no cats and foxes are getting in. They released 15 Shark Bay bandicoots from arid recovery in the state's north, which they helped set up 25 years ago. Fencing is critical to species recovery. Really it started because Khaleesi virus came through and decimated the rabbits and so we decided to try and exclude rabbits from an area permanently by putting up a fence and then we thought well if we're going to get rid of the rabbits we might as well get rid of the cats and foxes and that meant we could reintroduce a whole suite of mammal species that used to be there but have gone extinct. They bought secret rocks to continue that work. We built a 900 hectare exclosure a few years ago, so that was to keep out the herbivores, but also the cats and foxes. And we're just currently expanding that to nearly 4,000 hectares, and then we'll start uh, reintroducing more threatened species. They've invented protective measures. So the, most animals, they come straight up to the fence, and they try and dig here, which is why we have this foot netting. And then they look up, and they can't see the top of the fence because it curves back behind them. So they just run along the fence, trying to find a way in and they'll push against the fence. But they very rarely understand that they have to take a few steps back. And if they do jump, because this is unstable, they don't like, um, cats in particular don't like unstable things. So they sort of, they grab it and then they get unstable and they, and they drop back. And our hope is that we can get these animals established inside the exclosure, but then they can spread out into the wider area. John's invented something to manage cats. When foxes and cats first arrived, they would have taken out a whole lot of native animals that used to be here. The little bandicoots we've just brought back, they were here 150 years ago, and numbats and bilbies and rats and a, and a whole range of different species. And yeah, cats and foxes are, are very good predators and um, the native animals are not used to predation by cats and foxes and they were easy prey and yeah, largely wiped them out throughout most of Australia. There were two feral cats in this area when we first built the fence and this, yeah, this single felix had knocked them both out and we haven't had any more cats in here for the last 18 months. Yeah, the poison comes out of here and takes a photograph here. They're keeping an eye on the bandicoots. And we're really keen to find out how they're going, whether they're, they're gaining weight and finding enough food, and especially whether they've got um, pouch young. They set traps to check on them. Cameras detect any movement, friend or foe. Bandicoots are nocturnal. records a rare Sandhill Dunnart. Data from cameras all over Secret Rocks helps manage the feral animals. Loss of habitat, climate and fire have all had an impact. Even before the bushfires, the, the big drought and the heat waves were really knocking around a lot of our native species. We had sort of mass die off of, of birds and even mallee were dying um, in the drought and in the heat waves. And then on top of that, we've had the, the wildfires. And of course, um, for the first eight months, we didn't get any rain. So it was just sand blowing everywhere and any seedlings that did come up were just covered in sand. We're 
fenced in this larger area and we hope to bring back, or we plan to bring back, numbats and which are really cool little animals um, and really rare. They're rarer than pandas so it's really important that you know we look after them. It's all very well to sort of devote lots of attention to looking after pandas but our, our own Australian wildlife are equally as rare and threatened. They're hopeful they'll see bandicoot joeys hopping and scratching around soon. And numbats next year, and fasca gales the next. <laughs>